Remember the, the Jews and the Samaritans were not friends? But that he came across ten men that had leprosy. And I want to tell you a little bit about leprosy today. Because a lot of people don't know what it is because it, it really doesn't exist in the world very much anymore. Um, there, the, World Health or, they, the World Health Organization declared leprosy to be eliminated from the world. But there are still quarantine areas where lepers are required to live in other countries, not in the U.S. has been a fully, fully curable disease since the 1940s. We need to have a cure for it. In 2016, which was just three years ago, they introduced an effective, a, a vaccine. Everybody know what a vaccine is? It's supposed to keep you from getting these Shot. you know, shots. How many of you had to get shots in your arm? Keep you from getting sick. Okay. That's not one of them you get because there is there have been no cases of leprosy in the United States for many decades. But leprosy, starting in the Old Testament, was very different. If you had leprosy, you were if you contracted leprosy, it was very very contagious. Oh, when I say contagious, what does that mean? Really to make a lot of people think it was very contagious. You had to immediately move away from your family. You couldn't live at home. You had to go live in what they call leper colonies. I mean, you couldn't be around your family. You couldn't be around anybody else. You didn't have those because you could, get, you could give it to them so quick. And so there's, there was, didn't they know what it means? A stigma? That's like something bad. A saying, a, they thought that people were unclean. They had to walk in. How many of you heard Logan when he came in and he was saying, unclean, unclean, unclean? He, that's what they had to do in the, in the Jesus day. If someone approached them and they had leprosy, they had to say, unclean, unclean. Now, some people think that leprosy actually causes like your nose to be eaten off or your, or your ears or your fingers or your toes. But that's actually not truly the case. Most people that get leprosy get a second disease, and that's what causes it. It's an underlying disease that causes a lot of people had to have amputations or they would lose limbs or whatever. And the only leper colonies that remain in the world are in what country? There are truly leper colonies. Anybody? India. They live there, and in some places, this is sad, kids. In some places, in India, if you have leprosy, you can't get a driver's license. You can't ride on trains or buses or anything like that. And some places, they don't even let you vote if you have leprosy in India. Because there's such a, there's such a negativeness about it and stigmatism. Sad thing is that people who can be vaccinated don't want to get the disease anyway. But anyway, I wanted to tell you a little bit about leprosy tell you how awful it was. So in, in, in the day of the Bible, there was nothing they could do. There was no, there was no, there was no vaccine. There was no medicine. You all know if you get a cold or you get sick or you get the flu, you take medicine, you get better, right? But they, there was no medicine for leprosy. If you, if you, yes. Yes, there was Jesus. Jesus, very good. Now I thought that was a very good point. Yes, there was Jesus. Jesus, very good. <laughs> That's a very good point. There was a medicine for it that was, but Jesus healing you was your only choice, right? It was the only way. But he told them, Jesus healed ten lepers were in that group of ten of them. Only one came back. Yeah. Only one said thank you. Yeah. Ten of them, ten lepers in that group began to shout, unclean, unclean, get away, get away. Then they heard it was Jesus. And they ran up to Jesus and they said, Jesus, make us well. Heal us. Heal us. They were crying. They were pleading. They were begging for God, for Jesus to heal them. And Jesus said, you're healed. Go and show yourself to the priest. Why did he say that? Malachi? Um, just provide it. That's okay. Because the high priest could decide if they could be allowed back into society. He had that much authority. That would be like uh, that would be like Pastor JD being able to tell us if we could come back into society. 
all ten of them started to turn away, and one of them saw that he was he saw the disease had stopped. Wherever it was at, it had stopped in his body. You can probably feel so it. Excited. And he turned around and he ran back and he threw himself at Jesus. He said, Jesus, Jesus, thank you, thank you, thank you for healing me, thank you. Because he knew he could go home. He could go to his family. He could, if he was married, he could be back with his wife and kids. He could be with his mom. Well, not in those days. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but kids, he, he was so excited. But he was so thankful. But Jesus said, Where are the other nine? I healed ten lepers. Where did the other nine go? See, they were excited and ran toward the priest so they could go back to their homes. They didn't think the kind of thing Jesus did that. And kids, I want you all to think about that in terms of your life today. How many times, and I'm going to say I am guilty of this, we, we go, we pray, and we may thank Jesus for just a minute, and then we pray, dear Jesus, I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I want, I want. You know, maybe we're praying for good things. I'm not saying we're not. You know, my prayers, like, we have a lot of sickness in this church. We have a few people that have cancer very bad. Miss Carolyn has a heart condition. She's going through that. Yeah. Um, Jeff, Jeff has cancer. You know, we have a lot of people. And I find myself praying for them. But you know what? I forget to thank Jesus because I'm so worried about what I want to pray about. And I forget to say thank you to Jesus. And that's not right, is it? Well, you, know, you watch the commercials on TV or, or on the, online on your computers or your iPads or whatever, and you say, I want, I want, I want, I want. How do you do that to your parents? Be honest. There was something we used to do with TJ from the time he was about three or four up until just a few years ago. He, he would take one of the money we would have spent on one of his kids, and he would buy a gift for somebody else that needed a gift. And kids, that's awesome. If you have that opportunity,